Lockdown Reviews Baofeng BF888 SUHF Handheld Radio by Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730, if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR446. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730, if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR446. Okay, slightly different radio today. This one you should be familiar with if you watched the channel in recent weeks. The Baofeng BF888. Not, not the most favourite radio of mine. I'll just pop the battery off. Uh, well, it's a BF Treble Eight S, to be more specific. Claims less than five watts. It's UHF only, four hundred to four hundred seventy megahertz, which means it's ideal for the seventy centimeters amateur radio band. Uh, I believe these can be used on the business business band as well. I've not been told any different. I've not seen anything on Ofcom's website at all that would. Um, uh, say you can't do that. Uh, someone did comment that I was wrong and to check off Com's website. Uh, that person obviously doesn't know that I actually did despite the fact I said in the video that I checked off Com's website and couldn't find anything. So there we go. Uh, you get people, bored people like that and they're more coming out now so you know. So PMR446 is something that people sometimes use these on. They shouldn't really, because it's not technically legal. But I've um, not really heard of anyone being prosecuted for it. So, and I didn't even find that on the Ofcom website either. So what do we have then? We have this radio, which has metal chassis again. Uh, the antenna on this one's a bit bent. Um, this one didn't cost me anything actually. It was a free gift for joining the Radio Society of Great Britain. Uh, when I joined at the Blackpool Rally, not long after I actually passed passed my um, uh, foundation, interestingly enough. So I thought I'd go to that once I discovered that it took place. Uh, it's a shame it's not going to happen this year, but we already know why. Certain coronavirus. Because um, I've never I've never really missed a Blackpool Rally since then, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but now I'm going to have to, because I don't have a choice. So, back onto the subject of the radio, what do you get? Well, you get the battery, which apparently is rated at 3.7 volts, 1,500 milliamp hours. Um, feels quite light. It only has two charging contacts on the back. This is the, comes with the radio, comes with a drop-in drop charger, which is um, a bit questionable from a safety perspective, because the flex that's on it... Um, is um, uh, looks like it's single insulated and to be honest I don't trust having that plugged in all the time. Uh, I've got some double, double insulated flex lying around somewhere I can replace it with but at the moment that's not high on my list of priorities because I don't use this radio much anyway. So just bear that in mind when you're buying one of these and also check the plug that's on it and if it's one of those dodgy two pin Chinese plugs cut it off and put a proper UK plug on it or or a um, uh, plug for your locality, or use a proper certified adapter, not the death adapters that come with them. So, please do not use those. Because, um, for whatever reason, I can't quite understand, the charges for these seem to just take the main straight in rather than have a separate transformer, which would make them much safer, but no, that's just how they are. So, just something to bear in mind, it's three buttons on the side, PTT, two programmable buttons, on the top you've got a volume power, rotary control to select to 16 channels and a removable antenna. I'm not sure what these antennas are like, I'm going to have to find out. I'm going to have to get an antenna analyzer or something or maybe a, a VNA or something to find out. So on the top you get flashlight, most annoying, and you get an indicator here that indicates whether the radio is transmitting or receiving. So the battery just slides on the back and there's a clip on the back there and it should just press in. I'm not sure if that's how I've done it right. On the side, standard Kenwood speaker mic connector so you can just use the program being cable for the UV5R as well. So this radio, I don't like I said, I don't use it much but it doesn't seem too bad even though it's lightweight. I'm not a big fan of these, they're not really much good because the but this they're that dirt cheap, you can drop them and it doesn't matter you can just buy another one. They're like 
probably about ten pound or something. So I do know I do know of people who have bought these and used them on the stop or the stop frequencies, which I wasn't too thrilled about. Um, but it's on their head, be it if they want to do that. Um, that's covered in um, my using it legally video. That's on the channel somewhere. I think that was a pre-lockdown video actually. Um, and this uh, radio was programmed up for PMR446 just to show that it could be done. Uh, I'm going to be reprogramming it back to 70 cents before I test it. So I'm, so I'm legal and above board and you know, everything's all good. So let's switch on the radio. Right at the moment the radio is just beeping but there is a voice option but you can turn that off because it gets annoying to either English or Chinese but I like it off because it's very annoying but it'll beep if you turn the rotary encoder at the top or it'll say the channel the channel number which one two three through sixteen so there are sixteen channels in here at the, the moment it, all of them are programmed with PMR 446 frequencies like I said which is not what I want so I'm gonna plug the cable into the tablet and reprogram this because that's what I've used. So the microphone is allegedly there but whether it actually is or not remains to be seen. I'm not sure what the audio quality is like from this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pair it up with a radio that I know has got very good audio quality and similar sort of size antenna that will be the Aretavis RT87. So, because all I'm doing when I go out and connecting the tablet up to the car antenna is testing the audio. I'm not doing a range test on these because the range testing I want to do it properly over an open field. I don't want or or from or actually properly around the town when I'm actually allowed to get out and about properly again. I'm only really allowed to do a little bit of exercise a day at the minute. But let's say about as long as I'm only out once to do that. That's fine. I've got to go out shopping anyway, so. There's a couple of bits and pieces I need, um, including a little project that I'm working on, which will probably involve. There's a, a there's a large CRT TV in here at the moment, which was in my shed. It's just getting a couple of days to get reacclimatized to being inside again. Whether it still works remains to be seen, because I don't know. It could still work, but it might not work. But I don't know without plugging it in, and I will be doing some checks on it before I do anything else and that means I've got a good power plan to get batteries for the remote control because apparently it takes batteries I don't have but that's a different matter subject. Back to the radio because I'm not going to be going to power plan with the radio although it might be in the car. My UV5R is in the car but still missing its battery so unfortunately I can't power that up without using the battery eliminator which I do have somewhere. So I can't, so that wouldn't make a fair test because that would actually be in the car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reprogram this because like I say it's programmed for PMR 446 at the moment and then I'm going to go out with a radio with an equivalent size antenna uh, the Retrovis RT87 and see if we have any difference in audio. Now because that's all I'm interested in is just to see how it sounds. So I'll find a clear frequency on 70 stems and we'll go from there. So I shall be back when I go to do that part. Once again you join me in the car, a uh, very hot car today because the sun's been shining and I've got the, ooh, excuse me, uh, got the um, uh, RTL SDR on and I've got the screen recording software recording so you can see the transmissions. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk a short distance down the street like, I'd know, like I've been doing and I'm taking both the radios with me as before um, well, as on the first one, sorry, and then uh, we'll, I can see how that bow thing compares to a radio that has slightly better audio. So, I'll catch up with you out of the car, because I'm about to boil to death in here, I think. Well, actually, it's not that hot, but it's hot enough. Okay, let's try and get that to focus. There's the radio one in question for this video it is powered up um, I have no way of dropping the squelch on that one so um, yeah I've got the other radio in my hand there just just have to see if anyone comes back to me 
or not, as the case may be. So, because uh, I've got no way of dropping the squash on this radio, because I don't know if I programmed one of the side keys to do it. So, let's just see if the frequency is available. Is this frequency in use, please? Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform. Yeah. It's a bit difficult when you can't drop the, the squelch. One more time. Is this frequency in use, please? Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform. Yeah. Um, one point I'd like to make out about um, uh, the 70 centimetre amateur radio band in the UK is that amateur radios have. Amateur radio users have secondary status. Uh, the primary um, uh, status is given to the Ministry of Defence. And I live in an army town, so it's kind of not something I want to be doing for too long to try not to upset the army. Now, I had to wait a little bit because a very large uh, high ab wagon just showed up. And very large and long and articulated, actually. I'm tripping over the stones there. Hmm, buzzy bee. So, let's go down the street. Just a little bit of a distance from the car and the receiving antenna. Not too far. And I dropped my retivis, but it's quite a durable radio. I'm not sure how I dropped it because it was clipped onto my coat, the belt clip. But it's a durable radio, so. And it wasn't actually expensive either, so it should be fine. So the radio we're looking at is this one here. So I'll go down to the location that I was at before, which is where, just down there, where the phone box once was, which I think they've removed because of coronavirus, or the fact that everybody's got a mo every man, man, woman and child has a bloody mobile phone. I don't really like mobile phones that much because of the way people use them. Although I am filming on a mobile phone. It, is a, it, it doesn't have a SIM card in it. So it can't make and receive phone calls. I'm using the camera functionality of it. Unfortunately, that's led to things like um, uh, Snapchat and whatnot, which unfortunately gets abused. So this is the location again. Radio is still powered on. So I've checked, like I checked the frequency before, so let's see. This is a nice, suitable distance, and this is, might be a good challenge for this radio. Mike Zero, Whiskey November uniform, testing the Baofeng bf 888 s And I'll do another one, just to make sure. Mike Zero, Whiskey November uniform, testing the Baofeng bf 888 s Okay, so I've done the two on the BF Triple Eight S. I've just got to try and rearrange things a little bit because put that one in there. I'm just trying to drop the camera. This is a phone. Okay, so let's try on this radio. Mike Zero, Whiskey November uniform, testing the Retivis RT87 on 70 centimeters. And again, just uh, two meters away from this gentleman. Social distancing. And one more try. Mike Zero, Whiskey November uniform, testing the Retivis RT87 on 70 centimeters. All right, I'll go back to the car, see how that came out, and then I will go back up into the house and do what I've got to do with it and finish the video, basically. See you soon. Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, testing the Baofeng BF Tabulator. Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, testing the Baofeng BF Tabulator. Right, so, that's all done. Um, what can I draw from that? Um, the treble 8 got into the receiver no problem at all. The 
RT87 on the other hand, I didn't, that wasn't received, despite the fact I was only a short distance away. So I'm not sure what the cause of that was. Because even a short distance away, despite the fact that that mount's using rather rubbish coax, shouldn't have made a difference, because I'm pretty sure that the that the um, uh, treble 8 was on lower power than the RT87. So I honestly don't know what happened there. So, but the main radio subject matter, the treble 8 got into the receiver no problem at all. The other issue I had was that the RTL SDR actually drifted a little bit because it actually got quite hot in the car. So, I wasn't able to correct for that because obviously I was not in the car. So, and obviously I wouldn't have had it in the car if I was do if I was doing it, an actual proper test on an actual antenna. So, unfortunately, as it stands, that's just how it's been. So, conclusion: the the BF Treble Eight seems to be okay. The audio sounds fine from it. Um, and I was hoping to pit it against the um, uh, RT87, but it didn't work out quite as planned in the end. These things sometimes never do. So, would I recommend buying a BF888? If you need a disposable 70s radio, then yeah, why not? Um, I'm not, like I say, I'm not the biggest fan of it. That's my personal, well, that's my personal thoughts on it. But it is quite a useful radio to have if you just need something for like, of a local 70 cents use. Um, I was going to program it up for the um, uh, GB3 FC repeats, I believe it is. Oh, it's on the Norbrack Castle Hotel in Blackpool, but because I'm not going there now, I don't have to do that. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this video all finished off for you and I'm going to get it uploaded hopefully by the end of today, which is the 15th. So, I wish you 7 threes for now, and I want you to also remember to stay safe, and I will certainly will be, I'll be certainly trying, no matter how many people try otherwise to make sure that doesn't. In particular, I've noticed that from the soldiers when I've been delivering to the barracks in Catrick Garrison. Well, none of them seem, well, most of them anyway, don't seem to understand that even if they've been tested at negative for the coronavirus that they have to stay two meters away. It, yeah, they seem to think that if they've been tested and they haven't got it, then that means they can be as close as they damn well please and that the restrictions don't apply to them. Unfortunately, it does. Um, and I will and I will always enforce those restrictions, especially with the recruits at the infantry training center at Vimy Barracks in Captric Garrison, because they, unfortunately, are the worst for it by getting too close to the gate. So, yeah, and I don't want to catch this virus and I'm doing everything I can to avoid it. So, yeah, just before I rant on about that because uh, I've had a, quite a few issues with, with them lately. So, this is Paul Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446. And, stay, like I said, stay safe, guys. And if someone gets too close to you, remind them of the two meter rule when you're out and about. Just remind them. That's what I've been doing and that's what I'll be continuing to do until such time as everything is all back to normal and this virus is no longer a threat. So any threes guys, enjoy your radio, stay safe. Don't forget, you can subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to be notified of new videos as I upload them. 73 from Paul, Mike, Zero Whiskey, November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango, 730 on 11 metres and PMR 446.